All right, so what is average velocity? It is the amount of time something took to get there divided by how long it took, or no. It's how far something went divided by how long it took to get there. All right, thanks. But what really is average velocity? Let's find out in the lesson. And that's exactly what you'll be finding out in this lesson. Brilliant has recently given me huge funding so I can change the world by fulfilling my dream of 180 physics websites for 180 school days. Now, Brilliant respects me so much that they've even put a link down in the description, especially for my fans, not the terrorists, my own fans, that will get 15% off once they use our link. 15% off their premium offer. Now isn't that great? You may be thinking, huh, and uh, then start typing up the dictionary. But if you type up the dictionary, what's going to come up is that velocity is equal to speed. So is velocity equal to speed? No! So you should know if you watch scalars and vectors, hint, hint, click, click, that velocity is a vector. But what is speed? Speed is like velocity, but it's the scalar version. But kind of see a coincidence here. Is it just me or does v vector start with V while scalar starts with S? Suspicious, am I right? I'm not uh, so I'm lost up. But anyway, let's not take a tangent over here and let's get to the difference between velocity and speed. Like that, velocity is the change in displacement, not distance. Remember, vectors, not scalars, over t the change in time. So, the change in displacement would obviously be just x2 minus x1. Now, you might be thinking, hey, Professor Sabuno, isn't distance also just the same thing? Well, maybe, but the thing is, in this placement, x2 can actually be... x2 can be less than x1, while in distance, you don't care which direction it is. So x2 must always be greater than x1 no matter what. So that means that this can be negative as well, while this, no negatives. Hmm, something to think about, yes? All right. So... That's the difference between displacement and distance, just a small hint of the last lesson. And now we will look at the change in time, which is of course t2 minus t1. So let's say that you have something that is on the x-axis, say an apple, and then it suddenly grows legs and starts moving. Now that is one very radioactive apple, and it's probably been to Chernobyl and back. But the apple starts walking. So it walks along the x-axis this way, and then it starts walking back. Now, the thing is, the displacement is obviously negative, while the distance is still positive. That means that here, velocity will be negative, if you remember basic fractions. But and speed, which uses the change in, well, distance, not displacement, will be positive no matter what. So the difference between velocity and speed is that the radioactive apple has negative velocity but positive speed, because speed can never be negative. So that's the difference between velocity and speed. Now what is average velocity? Well, average velocity, of course, isn't your exact velocity at one point. Hit, hit, next lesson. But, and rather, average velocity is the average of all your velocities and moments on your entire interval. So, let's take a classic example. It's going to give me a lot of nostalgia. Because when I was just a little baby, and I only knew how to draw, draw skateboards, not bikes, but I was given this calculus problem. So if I ride my bicycle for 30 miles and I, if I tell you where my position is as a function of time, um, can I give you that function? I'll write what my position was as a function of time. So P of T 
is equal to g divided by 3 times t squared. That's my position function. And uh, when I was writing, uh, in the first 20 miles, I saw speed limit signs that said 25 miles an hour. And uh, what you've got to tell me is, did I break the law? Dr. Kabat, I think, hopefully I know how to draw, you know, a bike this time. So let's just um, draw a bike. No, that's not an... All right. So this is Dr. Kabat, and he's driving this bike. No, that did not look like a bike at all. You know what? Let's draw a skateboard. <laughs> I give up. <laughs> Just draw a damn skateboard already. <laughs> so, Dr. Kabat is on the skateboard. I still haven't pulled up from four years ago. At least I know how to draw hair now. So I guess that's enough. But anyways, uh, Dr. Kabat is on a skateboard and he's traveling 40 over 3 t squared. And let's just say that the bike was one hour long, uh, one and a half hours long. So I guess you can use this. This using a graphing sort of situation, although it's not really ideal to make Dr. Kabat bike up for a uh, skateboard upward, probably fall and it won't be a happy ending. Not like the Swiss painter on Einstein's mind. Um, um, uh, don't worry. But anyway, he is zero. And D initially is also zero. Uh, we're not using zero comma zero. Unless Dr. Kabat knows some way that I don't to levitate with his skateboard. But obviously I don't think he can levitate. Uh, so uh, there will be no change of the Y the axis here. So here at the finish line, T we already know it's going to be 1.5 hours. But we don't know D. That, that's the critical thing we need to find what his abnormally fast velocity was. So, let's see what this would be. Well, let's just plug in 1.5 here. So, that would give us P of T, or basically just delta X if you're looking for a shorthand. It's equal to 40 over 3. You can technically write 1.5 is 3 over 2. So... You can multiply that by 3 over 2 whole squared, which gives you 40 over 3 times 9 over 4. So, this is going to be 3, and this is going to be 10, which gives you 30 friggin' miles. That's a long trip with just a skateboard, but to be fair, just 1.5 hours. But typically, you don't skateboard that long. But anyway, Dr. Kabat is a strong man, so he doesn't use the human limitations. But anyway, t, uh, t final is 1.5, D final is 30 miles. So what can we do? Well, of course, we just take, of course, this is displacement, not distance, remember that. So DF minus DI, that would be 30 minus zero. So in all practice, it's 30 over TF minus TI is 1.5 hours. So, as you can see, that would give us 20. Since we're moving in one direction, it's the same. So just df minus di over tf minus di, which is going to be equal to, as we can see, 30 over 1.5, which is also 20 mph, because there was only one direction of motion. But let's put a twist on it and say now that he decides to skateboard back home. So he takes another three out, uh, 1.5 hours to put and bring himself back home. So that means that he went 60 miles over a trip of three hours. Now the thing is, copied, pasted. Thank you. All right. So now. So let's put the numbers back in, but this time we know that the displacement final since he went back home was zero. So zero minus zero is zero on the top, while uh, t final t initial is just three hours. So 
That means that he went at zero miles per hour. Average speed. What I'll do is copy and paste the same thing and then just erase the arrows. So, um, just erase the arrows and pretend like this was the original equation. Just don't tell the viewers. But anyway, this is speed. Oh, I didn't copy paste that, I promise. But anyways, this speed, of course, it knows nothing of vectors. So, that means that df is obviously 60. 30 plus 30 is 60. And then di is 0 over tf, 3 hours, minus 0, and comes out as 20 mph. So you can see that it clearly took some twists and turns over here. And what type of learner would you be? I'm a visual learner. I'm All right, excited. got it. Thanks. Subscribe to Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science, especially programming.